Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I wanted to give you an update on my miscarriage journey, how I'm doing, how I've been feeling after my DNC, and just kind of update you a little bit on what's been going on with me. I also did get the genetic results back from our DNA pathology testing, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. I do think after this video, there's definitely one more video that I want to film that dives really deeply into our DNA results or our, our genetic testing results. But then after that, I think I wanna do a question and answer video as well, just so I can kind of wrap up you know, all of these videos and put a little bit of closure, at least on this portion of my journey. I do feel like I have learned so much throughout this process and I do hope that I could share a portion of that with you guys. I was talking to my dad yesterday um, and I remember telling him like, I feel like I have all of this knowledge now. What am I supposed to do with it? Am I just supposed to sit on it forever? I feel like I need to talk about it. I need to tell people about it. And you know, that's one of the reasons why I filmed the DNC video. Um, but I, I hope that these videos are helping you guys. And I know, I know that they're helping me as well. I feel like I've created this amazing community of supporters that are praying for me and supporting me and um, not just me but each other you know so many of you guys have shared your stories with me and with everybody else and i feel like talking about it helps so much so thank you guys uh, for all of the love and all of the support all of your comments all of your messages all of all of it i i never you know would have expected any of this to happen i thought very heavily about turning the comment section off on all of these videos because I was just so worried about what could possibly come back from the community and I'm not disappointed. I, I'm so, you know, proud of me, proud of us. So I think first I'd like to start out with telling you guys how I'm feeling just emotionally, mentally, um, which I think is the hardest, longest, mo most taxing part of recovering from a miscarriage. And I have to say, I, I'm honestly feeling tons better from when I filmed my last videos. Um, it's been about two weeks since I filmed those videos and it's now been about a month since I had my DNC, about a month, five weeks-ish since I found out about my miscarriage. So I've had, you know, a decent amount of time to really grieve and um, share the news with my family and talk about it and think about it and my husband and I have done a lot of you know grieving together and um, I've tried my best since then to keep my mind busy and do things that make me feel a little bit more normal for me that is such an important part of the grieving process getting back to normal making myself feel normal I know myself very well and I know that if I just sit and grieve for too long it turns into a depression um, and I wanted so badly to make sure that that didn't happen in this situation and I feel like I'm doing good. I know my emotional road to recovery is never going to end. I'm going to think about this for the rest of my life. There's going to be certain things that trigger me, you know, day to day or 10 years from now or 20 years from now or 60 years from now. And, you know, I'll never forget this. I will never ever forget this but I feel like I'm in a good spot right now and um, it's getting better every day. If this is the first video of mine you are watching and you're unfamiliar with my miscarriage journey, I will leave, I'm, I think I'm gonna make a playlist, so I will leave that playlist down below for you so you can kind of start from the beginning. But I left off in those videos telling you guys about my DNC procedure and like I said, since then, it's been about a month since I've had that. And two weeks after that procedure, I did have a follow-up appointment with my OBGYN where she just, you know, did a checkup, made sure I was doing okay, kind of told me what to expect. We talked about when it's safe to start trying again. So to give you guys a little bit of a um, summary of what happened there, I was almost certain she was going to do a physical examination of my cervix. Um, to make sure that everything was closed, but she didn't. I don't know if that's standard practice or not. I know when you go in for your six weeks postpartum appointment, they do do that to make sure everything is healing appropriately. So in my mind, I just assumed that would happen for this as well, but she didn't. Um, but she did ask me certain questions like, how has your bleeding been? How has your cramping been? 
and I told her, you know, I, I bled pretty heavily for the first couple of days and since then it's been on and off spotting and she said that is absolutely perfect. That is exactly what I want to hear and to me it sounds like everything is, is healing well. She then gave me the okay to go ahead and start taking baths again, which I'm so grateful for because I love my baths. I take a bath like every night, every other night, and I was really missing that for you know the two weeks that I wasn't able to do it. We talked a little bit once again about healthy distractions, so things that I should and could be doing. Anytime I start to feel a little bit sad, um, we did talk about, they do have a counselor that I did speak to when I had some postpartum depression that is in office and now she's virtual, but that I can go to and speak to if I ever feel like I need to. But aside from that, just making sure I keep myself busy with healthy distractions. So things like exercise, um, getting my nails done, online shopping, she suggested. And I was like, oh, see husband, online shopping. <laughs> doctor's approval, doctor's orders. One of the things I noticed from my physical portion of the DNC miscarriage recovery is I felt like my body was feeling very similar to how I felt postpartum. You know, at a, at a smaller degree, but I did feel like I was feeling some of those postpartum physical things. So for example, the night sweats. I remember the first kind of week after my DNC, I had really, really bad night sweats or just temperature changes. I was really, really hot and then I was really, really cold. And I remember that this is something that I experienced with my son uh, postpartum and I didn't know what was going on. I felt like I was getting sick with the flu or something like that. But because of your hormone shifts, you know, your, your hormones are dropping drastically at that point. That is one of the most common things you experience. So she did tell me, you know, I brought this up to my doctor and she did say that's completely normal. Um, along with that, I have written down that I had smelly BO, <laughs> which is kind of funny, uh, but I had that with my son. I felt like my body odor, specifically under my arms and just in general, smelled different to me. Um, and that again is because of the hormonal changes. I did experience that, you know, post miscarriage as well. Also some of the very common things, just like a slightly achy uterus. I did have to use a heating pad here and there. Um, I did have to take ibuprofen just to kind of aid in minimizing the pain for the first 48 hours and then occasionally after that i never had to use anything um, heavier or more intense than ibuprofen i was prescribed hydrocodone but i never had to use that one of the very bizarre physical things that happened to me that also happened to me after i delivered my son is i started feeling some very almost like carpal tunnel like pain in my wrist and after my son, I figured that developed because of breastfeeding or trying to breastfeed. You know, you're holding a, a baby in weird positions, trying to get them to latch and, and holding little pump cones and things like that. So I figured that that was because of that. And eventually it did go away. It probably took a good three or four months to fully go away from me postpartum with my son. But I noticed uh, a about a week after my DNC, I started to experience a mild version of that same wrist pain in the same area. And it was totally bizarre. I thought about maybe is this hormonal? Is this like some sort of carpal tunnel that develops after your body expels a placenta? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so I brought it up to my doctor and she said that is kind of bizarre. And she said, it sounds like something that might be psychological, like your brain might be tricking you into thinking it's there and it's not because you feel like it should be there. I don't know. Um, it did go away. It only stuck around for a couple of days, but it is something that I experienced. In that same appointment, we did also talk about when it is safe to try to conceive again and when she thinks I should start trying again, if I was ready to start trying again. So the general directive she gave me is that there's no medical reason why you have to wait any longer than one full cycle. Uh, there's lots of stories out there of women who conceive right after their DNC, before they even get their first period. Um, but my doctor did say she highly recommends I wait until I at least get my first period. That way I know my body is back to normal, working the way it should. You know, when you have a DNC, there are instruments that go in your cervix and in your uterus and those could cause issues they're very rare, they're very unlikely, but it could cause issues. 
So she said to just play it safe, she recommends you wait at least until your period starts. And if I wanted to be extra safe, extra on the safe side, I would complete that cycle and then try the next cycle. So that means it would be two periods. As of right now, I have not gotten my period back yet. She said that it will probably come back sometime in March. If she had to guess, probably mid-March, about six to eight weeks after the DNC. I know when I had my son, I didn't get my period back until I think it was 13 weeks postpartum. She did say that if I don't get my period within 12 weeks, that that is an issue and I do need to let them know so we can see what's going on. I do think that I have ovulated though, and you're probably like, how could you know? Um, I'm not testing right now. My husband and I are not trying to get pregnant at this moment in time. Time, but my body gives me very obvious physical signs of when I am ovulating. Um, I'm very aware of them and that has happened and so I feel like if I had to guess my period will probably come in the next week or two. So at the time of my appointment my genetic results had not come back yet. If you're somebody watching this and you just had a DNC or a miscarriage and you're waiting for your genetic results, I was told it shouldn't take any longer than two weeks. It ended up taking about three and a half weeks for those results to come back. I don't know why. I don't know the reason why. I just trusted the system. Of course, I was very anxious to receive those results, but regardless of what they say, they are just meant to be informative. There isn't really any action required as a result of these results. My doctor did say in my appointment, she was like, the only thing that could possibly lead to action required is if your results do come back completely normal, meaning your uterus is completely normal, the fetal tissue is completely normal, meaning they have absolutely no idea why the miscarriage happened, it just happened. That could be an indication of something like a hormonal issue or imbalance with me. And in that situation, we would consider doing progesterone when I do get pregnant again, possibly some blood work or things like that. The genetic testing also could possibly identify inherited genetic issues that either happen from the sperm or the egg. And in that situation, you know, you could do a full blood panel or full genetic testing um, on myself and my husband to see, okay, what's the likelihood of this happening again? But generally, those genetic results are just informative. So like I said, I did get my genetic results. Uh, it was about four days ago now, four days from me filming this video. And they were initially released on our online portal. So we have an online portal that connects us with our doctors or providers where they do things like appointments and test results and messaging and things like that. So these results were released to me really, really late Sunday night. And of course I immediately clicked on them and read them and I had zero understanding of the reporting. I mean, if you look at it, it's a pathology report. So it's a bunch of letters and a bunch of numbers that truly mean absolutely nothing to me. So I wasn't quite able to decode them until I spoke to my doctor the next day. I did do you know, some Google searches and things like that to try to figure it out myself. And I had a good understanding of what it was, but I didn't truly know what was going on until my doctor called me the next day. So this is where I do think I'm gonna film a separate video talking a little bit more about our genetic results because I, learned so much and there's so many you know fascinating things when it comes to genetics and genetic disorders and dna and chromosomes and i remember in my biology class the genetic chromosome part of that class was so boring to me and now as an adult especially going through this i wish that i would have paid more attention because you know it truly is fascinating and um our genetic results were able to tell us whether our twins were identical or fraternal, what their sex was, and whether or not there was any chromosomal abnormalities identified. So our pathology findings did indicate that there was only one strand of DNA present in the fetal tissue, which does tell us that these twins were identical completely blows my mind because throughout this entire pregnancy process, everybody said it's very likely that your twins are fraternal. They were die-die twins, which means they each had their own sac, 
and their own placenta and the majority of those twins are fraternal which means they come from two eggs and two sperms they're basically just siblings that happen to be growing and gestating at the same time uh, but these twins were identical they did also identify within that strand of dna that there was a chromosomal abnormality that caused the miscarriage and that is where I think I'm going to go ahead and save that for a different video. So I don't mean to leave you hanging, but I feel like I would just go off on a tangent and make this video super, super long. But there was a genetic uh, abnormality, chromosomal abnormality identified, and this abnormality is not inherited. So it was not something that my husband or I caused. It wasn't due to a bad egg or a bad sperm. It wasn't due to me and my body being incapable of harboring a pregnancy. It wasn't because of something I ate or something I did or heavy lifting or anything like that, which naturally, when you have a miscarriage, especially when you've had a healthy pregnancy prior, your mind automatically goes to that. What did I do differently that I didn't do last time? What did I eat that I wasn't supposed to eat? You know, all of these different questions and things that go through your mind. And it was very, very comforting um, to know that it wasn't something that either of us caused or either of us did. My doctor even told me that this is f the best possible miscarriage outcome for me because this means that, again, it wasn't inherited, it wasn't something I did, and my body was able to detect that there was something wrong with both babies. And you know, it did what it was supposed to do. It, it, it terminated the pregnancy, you know, on its own. And that means that my body is in tip top fertility shape. Um, and it's able to identify those things, which is really all you can ask for. She said that because of that, uh, my chances for a healthy pregnancy next time are excellent. And in fact, most women, um, after they have a miscarriage, their chance is even higher to have a healthy pregnancy right after, especially when your miscarriage was caused from something like this. So that makes me very hopeful. It makes me very happy. I mean, it doesn't change the fact that it happened. It doesn't make me any less sad. It doesn't make me grieve any less, but it definitely gives me some hope for the future and it, it provides a sense of closure so that is where I'm gonna end this video but if you are curious or want to know more about what the chromosomal abnormality was that was identified in our genetic testing please stay tuned I will film a video all about it but yeah if you have any questions or comments or anything like that go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below because like I said I do want to film that Q&A video but Again, thank you so much for watching and for following my journey, for all of your amazing comments and your amazing support. I appreciate it so much, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.